Hey y'all, Biohack here. Uh, we have a new video, uh, Champion Spotlight, that Raid just released, and um, they've been, you know, showing us a bunch of stuff on the new champion that's coming out on the 22nd, I guess tomorrow, as the time of this recording, Sun Wukong. Um, and I haven't had a chance to actually go over his kit yet and talk about this champion, so I want to do that here, because I think this champion is absolutely nuts, and he's going to completely redefine the PvP meta in particular. Um, so first things first, let's go over his kit. His A1 has a 25% chance books up to 50 percent chance to stun the target for one turn um if it goes if the target has any buffs it goes up to a 75 percent chance to stun so that is very very solid a 75 percent chance to stun on the a1 against targets with buffs is very good um for an a1 ability uh but really what's gonna make his kit right here is going to be his a2 ability the staff of wonder and this one is super important because this is the one that I think is going to change everything. And that is it attacks one enemy, will ignore 50% of the target's defense. Uh, all the remaining damage from the attack, any surplus damage, um, if the target is killed, will uh, spread to the rest of the team, which is fine. Um, but what I think is really key, that damage can't be critical, by the way. But that's, all, I think that's all noise. What we really care about is this next part. If the initial target survives, places a sheep debuff on them for one turn which cannot be blocked so i want to talk about this ability a lot in a minute because i think this is going to be absolutely huge in how we use this um but let's go over the rest of the kit first so the next ability is his a3 attacks all enemies before attacking key before attacking that's really important on this ability steals all buffs from the enemies then plays a block deep or a block bus debuff on them for one turn why is that before attacking so key in here it means that we can use this on the hydra and even if the hydra boss puts up his um uh what's it called poison cloud which causes everyone to weak hits well because we're putting the debuffs up before we attack it's not dependent on us actually hitting the target and therefore not weak hitting the target this means this is going to allow you to completely buff strip all the hydra heads and put up block buffs on all the heads even if that head of uh which one is it head of suffering i think manages to spread that uh that poison cloud to all the enemies that's super super important because one of the major fail conditions of hydra is it spawns up and before you can get block buffs out uh that head makes everyone um you know puts poison cloud up makes you weak hit and then you can't keep block buffs up on like head of wrath who then gets increased attack and it just becomes a whole disaster so wukong will be really excellent for dealing with that in hydra um so i think that's in addition to the polymorph thing for pvp that's the other main main advantage of his kit which i think is really interesting also if we ever uh, it's been speculated before that we're going to get a head a hydra head that's will be stunnable and so if that ever happens that would make him really good to help counter that head in particular um but we'll see there and then of course he has his Passive, which is actually really strong as well. It revives this champion with 100% HP and 100% turn meter every third three turns after they were killed, which is nuts. 100% HP and 100% turn meter every three turns. That's that's absolutely crazy. And he's got this really nice passive ability, or sorry, really nice aura with 28% in speed. Okay, so that's the champion's kit. Um, I think it's a really strong kit. Uh, but the thing I think is the most interesting and it's going to most redefine the whole meta is this, like I said, Staff of Wonders with the ability to place sheep on a target. So I hear some people complaining about, uh, oh, more polymorph. Um, I don't understand that argument at all because the thing that makes the other polymorph bad is the debuffing um, and basically completely nullifies using uh debuffers and as buff strippers and things like that in the arena and he's actually very vulnerable to that himself with his a3 ability if you try and use that uh buff clear it's definitely going to be a big problem um but the staff of wonder here when you can put that sheep debuff on it's important because not only does the sheep a completely you know nullify the champion in terms of its ability to deal damage and things like that like a stun or something might also do it but it also turns off that passive ability while they're up um and so and it hits through stone skin so the the possibilities for this champion in terms of countering a lot of the top meta champions i think is crazy it's going to make go first arena teams so much better imagine like uh let's just talk about some ways that you might want to use this so ultimate death knight is obviously a prime example huge problem in arena uh you go first 
You turn Ultimate Death Knight into a sheep, congratulations. You're now free to target any of the other champions on the team. Other things I think this is going to be real strong against is countering Necrit. Uh, think about that. Think about you go up a team with, uh, you know, Arbiter, uh, or not Arbiter, let's say Duchess, Necrit, and Baron, and I don't know, Marichka. Something like that, right? You go up to that against that champion in the arena... Or maybe maybe Georgia instead of Baron. Like that's a that's a major major threat, right? You're gonna have a hard time getting through that, uh, killing that Georgian when he's being protected by Necrit. You bring Wu Kong in, boom, turn him into a sheep. Like problem solved, especially um, if you combine him with. Uh, block revive champions uh i think uh, people are starting to appreciate it a little bit but i still feel like people don't appreciate enough like the different types of win conditions you have in arena i think because classic arena has been the focus for so long in raid for like the competitive aspect and clearing things really really fast has been like the major way you win in get platinum finishes and things like that in arena right you got to go fast you got to kill enemy teams as quickly as possible but for live arena or tag team arena like the speed at which the fight happens is less important you don't need to win immediately and one of the ways you can guarantee a win is to block revive on the nuker so one of the teams you can think about using so for example um is imagine you have like that team I just talked about with like Marichka and Taurus and and uh, Duchess and some you know Nuker that's being protected by Necrit. Um, or I didn't mean Taurus, I meant like uh, Necrit. Um, you you come in and you turn them into a sheep. Okay, great, they're in a sheep, but you can actually then turn them back out of a sheep. So imagine you go in with the Nuker, you turn the Targets being protected by Necrit into a sheep. You knock it out of that sheep with another champion that's going first. And then you bring in someone like a Blood Gorge to just one-shot them and block Revive. So you're actually running a team with like Arbiter, Wukong, and two Nukers. And you just kill off the Nuker, block Revive. Boom. You are you won at that point. Especially given the fact that he's going to keep reviving himself over and over again. It's going to be really hard for the enemy team to kill your, t your team, even if it's all Nukers. Uh, even with just a decent Arbiter, uh, if they, all they have is support, it's going to be very challenging, especially when you get champion like Sun Wukong popping back up over and over and over again and throwing out stuns with like a 75% chance on his A1. Um, so in that kind of build, you'd run him with, you know, very, you'd probably run him like speed tuned with your Arbiter and running him super high speed, high accuracy to come in and do those uh, those polymorph debuffs. So that's like a one possibility. The other nice thing about that is even if your nukers are built relatively slow, like once they're turned into a sheep, it's only the two nukers that need to be synced up because they can't then do something like use Duchess to um, to veil them or something like that. Uh, you can just wait until you go boom, boom, nuke kill the nuker and you're done um i can see that being a really strong strategy in arena in live arena and in tag team um and like i said any any champion that relies very very heavily on passives the ability to block those passes by turning him into a sheep is nuts so obviously we can imagine taurus and marichka that same strategy i just talked about like imagine that same team except for instead of um like imagine a a duchess marichka uh udk and taurus team think about this you have your Arbiter go first, you have your Wukong in there really quick, and then you have your Nukers built relatively high speed. You bring in a Ronda, like a medium damage, not high enough to actually kill him, but like you're mainly there for applying the uh, block passive skills on your Ronda, and a Blood Gorge. And you come in, turn UDK into a Sheep, block the passives on Taurus, one-shot him with Blood Gorged, and boom, there you go, right? Like, yeah, you're going to take a while to finish off the rest of the, the Revivers, but once you've taken out their main nuker, you're done. Like all it is is supports after that. So I can just think of so many examples like this where uh, this champion is just going to be so powerful in neutralizing one enemy on the uh, on the opponent team that then just lets you open things up a lot. And I think, like I said, I think if we think about champions, this is going to buff and champions this is going to nerf. I can think of a few different things. Um, 
I think in general, this is going to make Necrit a lot worse, right? Because any target that's got all those protections on by Necrit, that's basically he's turning them into this immortal god, Wukong just shuts those off. And then when they pop back up, they're at half health with nothing, right? He's going to eviscerate Necrit in a lot of ways. Um, champions that, uh, I, like, I think we already talked about UDK. He's going to make him way worse. Um, Taurus and Marichka, I think he can be a pretty good counter to them, it's particularly because you can block those passives on certain things with um, with this ability to turn somebody into a sheep. I think that's super, super strong. Uh, champions that I think are going to get better, I think any champion which brings block revive is going to be really nice because even ignoring i you know i'm focused very much on this a2 sheep ability but if you think about it like even his ability to revive every three turns and constantly be stunning your team is going to be so obnoxious in the arena um with that really high chance to land he's just perfect for shutting down that like one critical win condition they have on the enemy team like in their nuker by constantly blocking um, or like turning him into a sheep and then stunning them over and over again. And then if he ever dies, he's going to pop back up with full health, full three meter, stun him again. So any champions that can block revive, I think are going to be really good. In particular, um, some of the strongest ones, like my favorite is probably Blood Gorge. He actually, uh, Blood Gorge doesn't get enough credit. I see him talked about a little bit. I love that champion. I use him a ton in live arena. Um, and he's he's really strong, especially since you can build him in a stone skin set because he has 100% ignore um, defense. So uh, I, I talk about him like as being great, but I don't think he's going to be particularly good um, to counter Wukong. I think he's going to be good when you combine him with Wukong, but because he's the wrong affinity, um, he's not going to be the best at countering him. I think a champion like Foley could be pretty good to counter Wukong because he is the right affinity. He hits pretty hard on a single target ability. Um, Anithui is another one. So I think blocked, uh, block revive champions are going to be pretty strong to counter him. Um, and I think any champion that's a part of a major go first team is going to get buffed. So like Arbiter is going to be actually better. Speed gear, focusing more on speed, I think is going to be more important in the arena because if you can shut down one champion on the enemy team, that's going to make go second teams much, much worse. So anyway, um, those are just some of my thoughts on Wukong right now. I'm super excited to get my hands on this champion. Like I said, I love to play go first arena teams, uh, especially in live arena. And so I think he's going to be a big, big buff for those. I can think of so many cool possibilities to use for this champion. Um, in particular, I love this idea of turning off the nuker and then blocking the nuker uh, with a, a block revive skill or killing the nuker with a block revive skill when it comes back up, um, which is essentially going to win you the fight, especially in live arena. That's a perfect strategy because people love to bring in a ton of revivers. They bring in a nuker and you kind of, you know, you get your choice on what to do um and I, I love i love playing that strategy now in live arena it already works great um and i think it's going to be really really strong with him so anyway uh those are my thoughts i will see you in the next video cheers